Hi everyone, welcome to Agribition virtually. We're really sad that you couldn't be here in person, but hopefully we can welcome you back to the grounds next year. Um, today we have an extra special treat. We've got Vegas the alpaca here with my friend Carol. Um, and we're going to do a little Q&A about alpacas and it should be pretty awesome. Uh, a couple housekeeping things. If you could remember to keep your mics muted, that would be awesome. Um, and the chat function is there for your teachers to ask any questions. One thing I will ask your teachers to do maybe right, this, uh, right now is to put in what grades you guys are. Uh, just so we have a little bit of an idea, that would be awesome. And I'm going to give Carol the opportunity to introduce herself and I'm going to sneak away so I can read all your questions and ask them for it. So hi everybody, I'm Carol Poole and my farm's name is Tiger Lily Ranch and I live in Pilot Butte along with 19 alpacas and a llama named Taco. So this alpaca is Vegas and he's six years old. We raise... Keep talking? Um, so Vegas, we raise alpacas for their fiber for their hair. Good afternoon, everybody. We would shear them once a year, and we would shear them in April. Continuing on with the North Country Shepherds. Vegas is a boy alpaca, and he is, um, he's a little bit nervous. <laughs> we'll just let him walk around a little bit. Got a little bit of stage fright here. Yeah. Come here, Vegas. Come on. Good boy. Okay, so it looks like we've got some question com questions coming in. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. One of the questions I see is what colors do alpacas come in? Oh, that's an awesome question. So alpacas actually come in 22 different colors. The, um, but that would be for if you were producing um, clothing, fiber. But if um, we were at an alpaca show, they come in white, light, fawn, brown, black, and gray. Awesome. So a couple, that's great. There's questions coming in. So how tall can they get? So an alpaca can get about, so we measure them from their withers to the ground. And so I believe it is 30, 32 inches from the withers to the ground would be an adult alpaca. When they're born, they're just little, little. That's awesome. So it kind of leads into our next question of, and I know this is your favorite one, what's the difference between an alpaca and a llama? So, an al so they're cousins, first of all, and they're both from the camelid family, so they also belong with the camels. The alpaca is smaller. The llama is really, really big. So a, a llama would stand about this tall, a llama is about three to four hundred pounds, and an alpaca is about an uh, adult alpaca is about one hundred and fifty pounds. Um, another difference is is alpacas are raised for their hair, for their fiber, and a llama would be used as a guard animal. So they would guard sheep or guard alpacas. In South America, the alpaca, the llama is used for a, like a beast of burden. So they would pull wagons. They would maybe carry the um, the the men of Peru because the, those they're not as much much bigger than I am, um, and they'd be like a pack animal. That's awesome. So let me see what what other questions do we have? Oh, here's a good one. <coughs> Miss Gilly's class would like to know what is the name of a baby alpaca. Oh, that's an awesome question. So a baby alpaca is called a cria, and that's spelled C R I A. Cria. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know that. And how old do they have to be before they can have babies? Again, excellent question. So a girl alpaca should be two years old before she is mated, and a boy alpaca would start um, mating at three years old. Interesting. Here's another fun one. We've gotten this one a couple times this week. Can they jump? <laughs> they actually can jump. So, um, and al alpacas do a thing called pronking. And you should, you, after, when we're done, you should Google what is alpaca pronking. And it's kind of this funny little jump, this little boing that they do, kind of like what you would see a deer do in the pasture. And alpacas do that all the time, and it's called pronking. 
Oh, how how old is Vegas? Vegas, Vegas is six years old. Ooh, Miss Potter's class, uh, grade four class, would like to know how many stomachs alpacas have. Oh, that's an awesome question. So alpacas um, are ruminants, just like sheep and cows and goats. But mo so sheep, sheep and cow and goats have four stomachs, but alpacas are a little bit odd, and they have three stomachs. Interesting. Um, are some of them hairier than others? Oh, so um, what are you telling me, Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to say hi to everybody. <laughs> so are some of them hairier? Yes. So um, when alpacas first came to Canada, the, the first imported alpacas from Peru and Chile and Bolivia were really hairy. They just look like crazy hairy dogs. But over time, over the last 25, 30 years of us breeding them, we've gotten them to be a lot um, thicker for their fleece. And a hairy fleece wouldn't be very processable to make clothing or to make socks or yarn. The, um, so the, the fleece that we have on the animal now is a lot more processable for clothing. Here's another question that I know you love. Miss Strecker's class would like to know if alpacas spit. <laughs> so yes, they do. Not necessarily at me or um, other people, but they will spit at each other. So um, they will spit at each other if they're not very happy. So the first way you know that an alpaca is gonna spit is they always put their ears down. And so Vegas' ears are always up, but they will put their ears down. And um, if they're upset with each other, that's just the way they communicate, kind of like how they yell. Awesome. So we're gonna go back sort of maybe to a little bit of basics. I'll, I'll ask you sort of three questions. Um, how long do they live for? Okay. What kinds of things do they eat? Okay. And how much do they eat in a day? Okay, so um, alpacas in Saskatchewan or in Western Canada would live to be about 15, 16, 17 years old. But if you're in, a, in not a climate that gets to be minus 40, their life expectancy can be 20, 21, 22 years. Um, and alpacas love to eat food very similar to what a horse would eat or a cow. So they would eat different types of grasses in the summertime. They would have, um, so it, alfalfa and timothy and brome would be their favorite. And then, and we make bales of course for them for the winter. And then they would also eat corn, oats and barley. Corn must be one of the alpaca's favorite foods because I know on my farm, my alpacas eat all the corn first that I give them. And then, they, and then they'll eat the, cor the oats and the barley, but first they'll eat all the corn. In my garden, I had standing corn and they ate everything, even the cobs. Wow, they must be hungry. What was my, and then you want to know how much they ate, yeah. right? So I would feed, I don't feed by pounds, I feed in a cup. So for my grain, Vegas would get, mm, maybe he would get a half a cup to a cup of grain a day. So that's not very much. And then for hay, he would get, if I had square bales, he would maybe have a leaf, like pretty little, because he's only about 135, 140 pounds. So he's not that big of an alpaca. Okay, here's a really fun one. Miss Staniforth's class is asking, how many teeth do they have? Teeth. So alpacas actually have a really cool mouth. So, um, which is similar to um, a cow or a deer. I don't think Vegas will let me show you, but on the top of his mouth, up here, let me see if he'll let me, no. So he's got a hard plate. So he actually doesn't have teeth on the top, but he has teeth on the bottom. And of course, in the back, his molars, he has molars on the top and bottom. That's what they say about um, alpacas when they're eating grass, because they don't have two, two sets of teeth, they can't pull the grass out by the roots. And so that makes them a little bit environmentally friendly because they never pull out grass by the roots. They always leave a little bit of grass to grow. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, what do you use their hair for or their fiber? So I'm gonna answer that two, like two, different, two ways. So in the springtime, we shear the alpacas and um, 
the fleece that comes right off of the alpaca, we put in a bag and I sell it to a company um, out of Lloydminster that buys my alpaca fiber raw. And then what happens is they make a whole bunch of cool stuff. So they make Canadian made socks and they make yarn and they make quilt batting and they make shawls. Um, they make boot felts. They have lots and lots of fun things. So then I turn around and I buy their product, my product back from them. And yeah, alpaca socks are so warm. Alpaca fiber is five times warmer than sheep's wool. So it really makes lots of sense to want to wear alpaca in the winter time. Then your toes get to stay warm. I can attest to that. I have a pair of alpaca socks <laughs> and they are awesome. Um, Miss Massey's class would like to know how many alpacas you have on your farm. So I have 19 alpacas and then I have a guard llama and his name is Taco. And so he actually has a very serious job. His job is to look after all the mums and the babies. So, so he takes them out in the morning and it's quite the thing. I open up all the gates and Taco knows that he can hear me jingling around with the gate latches and he gets them all up and ready and then he walks first and then all the moms and their babies follow him out into the pasture and then at night when I call and I call here Taco Taco or here Paca Paca and all the alpacas come back with Taco. Taco is always in the lead. So his job is to keep coyotes and fox and all sorts of predators away from the alpacas. Okay, this is another really fun one. Rosemont School, the grade three, four class there, would like to know why are their necks so long and do people eat their meat? Oh, so I actually don't know why their necks are so long. That's a really great question. I guess this is just how they were made. <laughs> um, but um, yes, you can eat alpaca. It's a red meat. Um, it is not very, it would be very lean, so very similar, sorry, very similar to um, bison. Vegas doesn't like when I talk about <laughs> eating alpaca. <laughs> He's looking at me like, what? What do you mean you're going to eat me? <laughs> Anyways, alpacas, yes, you can eat them, and, and, um, and they're a red meat, and it would be something that we do, but um, yeah. Okay, Miss Easton has the question that I know you were really wanting to be asked. Where do alpacas originally come from? Yes, so alpacas come from South America. So they live in Peru and Bolivia and Chile. And the really cool thing about these guys is they live up, up high in the Andes Mountains. So they're like at 10,000 feet above sea level up to 16,000 feet. So, um, so alpacas are just really special that way. It's, it freezes just about every night there, so it gets below zero. That's why they have such a thick, warm coat. Um, and the alpaca is used by the Peruvian people for everything. They, the women and the children look after them. They're the shepherds of them. They use their hair for their clothing. They would eat them for their meat. They would milk them to get milk and cheese. Um, I wonder if you guys can hear him sniffing through my mic. <laughs> He's blowing me kisses. It does look like <laughs> Vegas wants some snuggles. Um, okay, here's another good one. Can they have twins or triplets? That's an awesome, because um, that's very common in sheep. So um, alpacas rarely have twins, and they would never have triplets. Um, I have a really cool little fact that I bet you Allie doesn't know is that alpacas only have babies during the day. So that's between nine and three. And um, so that's super fun. If they'll never have a baby in the in the evening or in the dark. So I'm, there's a, just a show starting right now. So I'm hoping you can still hear us. Maybe we'll just talk a little bit louder. Um, just make sure you guys can hear. Um, let me go back. What was the question that I saw? Oh, Miss Kay's class would like to know if they can swim. Ah. You know, um, I don't think they can, but they actually really like water. If you have a dugout and it's hot in the summer, they'll always go into the dugout and um, spend time to cool off. So that is something fun that they'll do. 
Alpacas actually have, um, for a bath, they would never go in the water to get clean. They actually love to roll in sand bowls. So they like to go and roll in the sand, and then all the little pieces of sand go into their fiber against their skin and kind of go against their skin and gets rid of all the parasites that they have. So that's kind of fun. Okay. So this question has come up a couple times. Okay. How long have alpacas been in Saskatchewan? Ooh, in Saskatchewan. So I'm going to say that in about 1992 would have been the first farm that got um, alpacas. And I believe they're just out of Saskatoon and they still have alpacas today. So that's High Plains alpacas. And they would have been the first breeder to have alpacas here and they still have them today. So I think that's really fun. Wow, that's awesome. Um, one of the questions I think is an awesome one, not that they haven't all been fantastic, but how many do you need in a herd for them to be happy? Ooh. So, alpa yes, alpacas are herd animals. So if you have one alpaca by itself, it would die of loneliness. It needs to be with its friends. So, or family, whatever, however it is that they are. So you should have at least two, but three would be a perfect number. So, yeah. And can Vegas see color? Can Vegas see color? I don't know that answer. <laughs> you guys are just quizzing us. This is awesome. Carol's going to have to go do some so, work. But they do, like, they do sleep in colors. Like, so, uh, so fa families sleep together when I mean, so uh, in the evening when the alpacas kush, when they sit down, it's called kush, K-U-S-H. And so like moms and daughters will often, grandmas will often be in like a little unit. And then you'll have, and then if, I, if I've purchased new alpacas from different herds, the white alpacas sleep with the white alpacas and the brown alpacas sleep beside the brown alpacas. It's very strange to me that they would do that, but that's what they do. That's fun. Yeah. So how much does an average alpaca cost? So if you're purchasing a pet alpaca, you would be looking at anything from $500 to probably about $1,000. If you are purchasing a breeding female, you could spend anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000. It just depends on quality and genetics and registration. Um, and a male alpaca, you know, could fetch you a lot of money if he's really, really a special one. But usually a male alpaca, um, to do a breeding male alpaca, would be anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000. Okay, so these kids have to save up their allowance. <laughs> but you can buy a pet. Or two, or three. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you buy more than one, because yeah. they like to be together. <laughs> How fast can alpacas run? Well, I know that they can't run as fast as a cheetah. And I know they're a little bit faster than a rabbit, so somewhere in between. <laughs> I actually don't know the figures of how fast an alpaca can run, but again, they do do their funny little pronking, and, and it is really cute. I hope you guys look that up. It's fun to, to see what that means when I say that, and they bounce in the fields, and it's just super pretty. That does sound really fun. I mm -hmm. want to see that one day. Um, oh, here's a good one now that we're getting into winter time. Do they like to play in the snow like yeah. we do? Yes, alpacas love winter because their coats are so hot. So remember I said that we shear them in April. And so when we shear them, we always make sure that the top knot comes off the top of the head and shear all the body because they get so hot. So as soon as it gets starting to get cold out, that's when the alpacas start to like, oh, finally, we're starting to get into the weather that we like. They don't necessarily like minus 40 because nobody likes minus 40, but these guys like like minus 10 and they'll run around the pasture. They they love they love the cold because they're they're they they're made to be in the cold. So fun. I want to play in the snow now. So uh, oh here's a good one, Miss Easton's class. What is a predator of an alpaca? Well that's an awesome question. So a predator to an alpaca would be a coyote. Um, a fox. Um, I feel like, you know, a bald eagle, like really, really big birds would be a predator to a, to a Kriya, to a baby, to a baby alpaca. I don't feel that, I've never heard of, of any animal being lost to that. A bear would be a problem. Um, and then actually we, um, like dogs are a really, really bad problem for alpacas. Oh. 
North Canada Repair House. So we just had this discussion before everybody joined, but can you tell us where Alpac or where Vegas's eyes are? <laughs> so, um, so Vegas. So first of all, I have to show you. I don't know if you if you guys will be able to see, but he's got really long eyelashes. I don't know if if uh, the camera can can go in and see these really long eyelashes. But he's a little bit wool blind. So when I get so he's okay like that here. But when I get him home, I'm gonna trim up around his eyes so that he can see really good. And is he fully grown? He is fully grown. This is as big as he's going to get. Oh, here's another good question. What do alpacas eat in the wild? So in the wild, they would um, love prairie wool, the prairie wool that is known on Saskatchewan grasslands. That would be the type of um, what they would eat in Peru. When I was in Peru, that's what the, the feed looked like, was just like what's, what our prairie wool would look like. They would, they love leaves. It's the strangest thing to me, but they love to leave, eat the leaves on all the trees. Um, and they would just, of course, eat any grasses and they, drink any type of water um yeah just those those types of things i think i feel that they really really like saskatoons or um sorry strawberries because they got into my garden and they ate all my strawberries and then they ate all the strawberry plants and then they ate all the corn and then they ate all the green beans so they were hungry this yeah, summer but they didn't eat the potatoes <laughs> and here's a good one can we ride alpacas no they're too little so he's, he's only, you know, 100 and, what did I say, about 137 pounds. And so they can, they can, he can carry stuff on his back, a third of his weight. So you'll have to ask, you guys should figure that out in math class. What's a third of Vegas' weight? So how much stuff could we put on Vegas' back? Because that would be about what they can carry. In, in South America, they would definitely use the male alpacas also to carry their things. Because the people in the high highlands, would you know they produce potatoes and then they take the potatoes down to the people that live like 2,000 feet below them so that and they would pick up their corn or whatever it was that they produce and so the people go down and at, at different the, because the altitudes are so high everything grows at different different altitudes so it's really interesting that that's how the people would would get their fares just go up and down the mountain to get stuff. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so one of the questions here is, are they a smart animal and are they loving? Yes, so um, I think alpacas are really smart. They halt or break really, really easy. It hardly takes any um, anything to, to get an, a halter on an alpaca. They learn really easily to jump into a trailer. They learn their name really quickly. So. They learn that when, when I yell, here, Paka Paka, or here, Taco, that I'm going to have food, so they come. Uh, one time I sold an alpaca, and a couple years later I seen it at a show, and it was just little when I sold it, like it was a Kriya. And then when I went to the show, and I went and went to, to touch the alpaca, and I said its name, and I just spoke, and the alpaca turned and, and totally knew who I was, got up, and came and like nuzzled my ear. So the alpaca definitely remembered who I was and um, they do prefer other alpacas to us. So they're not like loving like a dog or a horse, but um, they, um, they're really, they're, they're a really nice animal just to have around and to watch their little quirky behaviors. Um, okay, here's another great question. What is their vision like? Oh gosh, I think that it's got to be really, really good. You know, when they're out in the in the pasture where Taco is looking after them, they are very aware of all the things that are going on around them. So you know, if a, if a, we have a couple of big owls that live on our property, and when those owls, like in the dusk, when those owls are are out and about, the alpacas know. They also do a funny little alarm call, and so. When they make that sound, they all know that they need to get back into the, like back home, like back where the where where their 
where they sleep at night, so, which I think is kind of interesting. And so I think that they can see really good because they're always looking for predators and stuff. But I guess isn't too certain about all this noise. <laughs> He's more interested in everybody else. Okay. Vegas okay. is ready for recess. Yeah, Be um, Vegas is ready for recess. Oh, here's one. Do they have long tongues? <laughs> You know what? That's actually an awesome question. So alpaca's tongues are attached. So that means like when you guys can stick out your tongues, alpacas can't do that. So the reason why I know all this is when a baby alpaca is born, its mom does not lick it. Like a cow, when a calf is born, the cat, the cow licks the calf to get her dry, and that's not what a what a mom alpaca would do, um, because her tongue is attached, so she can't actually lick her baby. That's a really good question. Um, okay, I really like this question because I like to sleep, but how long do alpacas like to sleep for in a day? I think they sleep all day. They're always sleeping. <laughs> or if they're not sleeping, they're eating. So I think that an alpaca must... Oh, I don't know. I feel like they're always having a nap. There's like siesta time and then they get up and eat and then they lay down again and have another nap. They do that a lot, so I can't say how many hours, but it does happen a lot that they have naps. Okay, awesome. Um, oh, this question has come up a couple times, I think because I heard Vegas not too long ago. But what kind of sound do they make? Oh, yeah, so they hum. So um, they make a couple of different sounds, but my favorite sound is that they make a humming sound. And so they will, um, they hum to communicate. So the moms will hum or kind of like make a sound to their baby. Um, the when a when a when a mom and maybe like her older daughter, um, you know, see each other through a fence and they sniff noses, they'll hum at each other. They have this, and it's a pretty little hum. Um, when we had the big snowstorm last week, I went out and checked on the alpacas, and they were all sitting cooched, and they had snow all over them, and they were so happy, and they're sitting there humming away, all of them and chewing their cud, so it was really cute. Another sound that they make is an alarm call. That might be a fun thing to look up on, um, on the internet as well. It sounds kind of like a monkey. It's the oddest sound. It's a cool sound for you to, to hear. And then alpacas, um, maybe this is a little bit in depth, but alpacas are induced ovulators. And so the male alpaca has to make a, he makes an orgling sound is what it's called, and that, is a sound that the that the female alpaca likes to hear. So they also make that type of a sound. Okay, this is a good question to end on. How far can alpacas smell, or are they really good smellers? They've got to be. I think that those mums are always smelling, looking for their babies. They'll go and sniff, but I don't know, like in distance, how far they can smell. But I know that you know every baby has a distinctive smell. And so those moms will go around and look for their baby and sniff them all until she finds it and then she'll, she'll be happy and stop humming. And Hey, that's awesome. Um, oh, I think it's only 1.43, we have time for one more. Do they have a special way they greet each other? Like say hi to, to other alpacas. Oh, so yes, so when an alpaca, so if I've been to an alpaca show and I come back and, and I'm bringing you know, the show animals into the herd, the, um, everybody like runs up and they're all excited. Like it's like they get so excited to see their friends are back and they kind of make a humming sound and they, or they'll cluck to each other, especially if it's a mom and her daughter's coming back and they'll do this little sound and they, uh, they're, when they, when they see each other, they, they like to, I don't know, and they kind of like run up and around each other. It's, it's really, really cute. Yeah, it's just like they're like, yeah, my friend's home. That's yeah. so fun. <laughs> well, that was a really interesting session, and we hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, again, we're really sad that we couldn't see you in person this year at Agribition, um, but we really look forward to seeing you guys next year, and you can come see Vegas and his buddy Taco in person next year. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, and have a great day.